Hi everyone, welcome back to Plum Mashable. You guys have been asking me for an updated office tour for a very long time, so let's have a look. Alright, so when you walk into my office and you look around, there's an awful lot here. So we're going to do this section by section because I feel like that's the easiest way. Uh, and obviously this video is going to take me a while, so the sun will change, there, won't be, there might be different lights. Um, I'm also filming this on my on my iPhone, which is obviously different to normal. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll do our best here. Uh, so this is directly behind where I sit. So hold on, I'll just give you a, so you've got a bit of context. So my chair's there and, and that's sort of where I film normally. So this is directly behind me. Uh, so on this section over here, I have a couple of things. Uh, the first thing up here is where I keep um, some of my favourite cards uh, that I've both made and be given. So this one's from my very good friend uh, Simone. This was Charlotte's birthday card. This was one that I made, another one that I made, uh, and that was Charlotte's birthday card from me last year. Uh, there's also some tiny houses uh, from Uniquely Creative up there. Um, but what there is, is the Planners Anonymous pen collection that I have. I have a lot of them because I've been collecting for a long time. Uh, and they're all being held in a, uh, a pen holder that Ryan made for me in, uh, on his 3D printer. It is something that is expandable, uh, but as you can see, I'm running out of room. Uh, those two washi ones at the top, one is full of Christmas, Halloween, those kind of washi tapes that don't need to be included every day. Uh, and the other one at the moment has some Simply Gilded in it. I think that's all that's in there. Um, just some Simply Gilded. This is sort of like my overflow. Anything that doesn't fit in the system behind you that you'll see later uh, lives over there. And then in here, you have all of my Planners Anonymous washi. So if I come a little closer so you can see, I'll show over here. Um, this is all the old stuff at the bottom. So it sort of works from back to front. So this is all the really old stuff and it gets newer and newer and newer. And then it moves into over here where I'm running out of room, which is actually really funny considering um, I don't think PA is going anywhere. Um, is it, it used to be that the bottom drawer here was like all the, the special edition washi. So the stuff that didn't go with a set or go with a kit. Uh, but that's now grown up into here. And then this is where the new kit is. Um, girl strips on my desk at the moment. Uh, so <laughs> I'm running out of room quickly, but that's okay. It's okay. It'll it'll eventually probably go up to this one up the top. Uh, I might be able to do some wiggling or, you know, new office, kidding. Um, we'll, we'll find other ways. But these are the Deflecto washi drawers. I get mine from, uh, it's called It's a Mega Thing. Uh, they're on the Gold Coast. I find them just, the drawers are fabulous, and that's why you'll see them pop up all over the place. I have a bunch of sets of them. Um, so they will pop up all the time, but for washi tape, I don't think you can beat them. I think they're the best, the best way to store washi tape. And then moving down, this is my sticker cart. Now I've actually just recently redone it. So it is a little bit different. It is 99.999% exactly the same as it's always been. These are my sticker sorters from um, Luscious Labels. Denise made all these ones for me. They're available in the shop. I will link everything down below. Uh, but these ones are the, I guess, the categories that I've got. So I've got boxes, date covers, deco, uh, headers, and then I've got health, house TV, moods, holidays, planner, social sport, travel, work, samplers, social media, miscellaneous YouTube. And then at the back, I've got some of the, the K ones. I've got some kits. And then I've been keeping my... My sort of sticker books, my reusable sticker books are in here as well. They used to live over on the other side, but I feel like they belong with all the stickers. So that's where I'm going to be keeping them from now on. Uh, second one down, I have my memory dexes over here on the left. I like having them in there. They're kind of easy to get to. The danger with any of this stuff is that Charlotte's now big enough to reach it all, uh, which becomes a bit of a problem. Uh, but so far, so good. And then in here... A sort of kit overflow, so anything where I have used parts of it, but there's too much of it to put it sort of away. Whoops, lost my balance there. Um, too much to put them into like their own little, to put them in sticker books or to put, cut them down. They, they're still full kits, so they need to stay there. Um, but that's sort of those. And then at the bottom, I've got some candles, which I've been using a little bit for my um, wax seals, which stuff I am playing with. I've got a bunch of PA notebooks and sticker kits back there. I need to go through those. That's me being lazy. There's also my hot glue gun back there. 
and then just you know some other random cords and bits and pieces that you kind of need to have uh, around the place but this is an Ikea cart uh, I think it's called the Ragsog actually I know it's called the Ragsog uh, it's a pretty old one the teal one I don't know if they still make it I just find it's a really good thing to be able to pick up and move obviously it can roll over to my desk when I need it or it can sit back here if I don't stickers are a bit of a a bugbear is the wrong word but I'm I'm Every time I feel like I'm transitioning away from stickers, I kind of tend to come back. So it's sort of a, a complicated situation. Uh, but I do still love them. I do need to go through that top couple of boxes, especially, and work out what I need to keep and what I don't. Uh, and also, these ones are from Kmart. You will see these boxes everywhere because I love them. Um, Kmart is your best friend if you're organising a craft room or any other room for that matter. Kmart is wonderful. Uh, so you'll see a little bit of more of those as we go around the room. All right, moving on to the built-in cupboard that's in here. First of all, I've got a little bit of vinyl storage over there. That's mainly transfer tape and faux leather. Um, I've also got a couple of big freeze hats sort of sitting around the place because that's where they live in here. Um, this is also where I keep all my bags. Uh, and then usually this is covered, this sits a bit lower, and this is covered in cards. I pin them or peg them uh, all the way down there. These are cards I've gotten from friends. Um, unfortunately, Charlotte thinks it's a really fun game to play, uh, so I've had to take them off there for now. So this is my my built-in robe. Please ignore everything that's going on on the first top two shelves. Uh, most of it is storage boxes, mess, stuff that I don't use on a regular basis, uh, or projects that are being worked on. They are all, the ones on the left in the second shelf here are all from Kmart. They're really, really great boxes, but they're just good for keeping things out of the way that I don't reach for regularly, but I still need. So they live up there and I've got some overflows up there at the top. You can see them up there as well. This section here is used semi-regularly. It's not used every every day, but it's stuff that you, you kind of need to have. So I'll kind of walk you through pretty quickly. Um, over here, you see the sound change once I move over here. These tubs you will see on the other side as well. These are all from Kmart. They are their fridge storage tubs and I love them. They are the perfect size to fit stamp sets, which you'll see again over on the other side. Uh, but they also fit paper packs really beautifully. So they're very, very, very deep. So you can see they go all the way back there. They have little feet, which they sit on top of this one and especially in the other one. But here I get them to sit on top so they move easily. But if I am worried about them moving, I can push them back just a little and they kind of drop back and then they lock and then I can't it's not as easy to move I have to pick them up uh, so tub over there on the left is got uh, paper pads that are sort of more than six by six or they're not 12 by 12 um, different plastic pockets full of different things this is my brown paper when you see the stuff that's in the big cabinet in a second that'll make more sense it just doesn't fit uh, uniquely creative paper uh, some Christmas paper, and then you've got some pads, white paper, etc. So it's just everything basically that doesn't fit in here. Uh, then I've got paper packs. So these ones are mainly lawn fawn at the, at the back. Lots and lots. Uh, and then you've got some Christmas ones at the front. I've been bad and they've got mixed up here, but these ones are usually the Kayser Craft and everything except lawn fawn, and this side's usually lawn fawn, but I've done a bad job. Uh, so they've sort of mixed up. I keep them in these plastic bags and I'll show you them when we get over the other side because I store them somewhere else uh, but they're little six by six sandwich bags but what's great about them is it means I can keep the paper together so if I have a paper pad that's falling apart or I've got little scraps they can just live in there I like keeping things in plastic because it protects them um, we have evaporative air conditioning in the house and that does sometimes warp some paper so I like the fact that they're in plastic it just keeps them safe uh, the other thing I have here uh, I've got two things. I've got some mesh bags uh, and some Ziploc pack plastic pockets. Both of them are being are used for projects. These ones are mainly used for PA these days, and then these ones are projects. And then I've got some uh, boxes. So they're for obviously sending things out uh, to different people. Something I've been trying to do and want to do a bit more of is sending pre-made cards to people so that they can send them to people. So I did that to my from Ryan's grandma. Uh, I sent her out 10 birthday cards so that she can send them on to her friends. So that was sort of, they fit really beautifully in that box. So that was sort of where I got them from. I got them from Amazon. I can link them down below for you. Okay, continuing to this beauty. And she is a beauty. I got this off Facebook Marketplace. So I can't tell you where to get it 
Spotlight does have similar things. They're from, I think it's French, I think that's how you say it. Um, and you can get small ones or tall ones. If I was going to do it, like if I didn't find this, I would have was going to buy two of the small ones and put them together. Uh, but I got really lucky. It's basically just sort of 13 inch by 30, 13 inch by 13 inch kind of um, slots. And there's just a lot of them. It is very, very, very heavy though. It took Ryan, me and yeah, a lot of muscle to kind of get this done. Uh, but this is where I keep most of my paper these days. So the top one here, I'll go through all these really, really quickly. Top one here is chipboard that keeps both full pieces and little extra bits. Um, so at this point, I don't have too many overflows of that, so it works. This is sort of specialty paper. So I've got some colored glitter cardstock and some textured stuff from Kayser Craft. I will say this right now, I have too much paper. I know it. Um, I'm trying to work out how I can use more of it. It's a hard thing to do, um, but I, I am aware. Uh, this one is acetate, so it's got some coloured acetate, some sparkly stuff, some white stuff, some black stuff. I like playing with acetate, so that's fun to have. And it all sort of slides in there. This is white cardstock, so it's generally thicker stuff. Um, there is a couple of bits of just paper in there, but it's just white cardstock. And then you move through the colours. So you've got red, orange, yellow. And the biggest problem that I have is when I get too excited, sometimes I pop these back too far but you can usually grab hold of them uh yellow green teal blue because i have lots of them uh purple pink this is brown uh grays blacks and then you move into sort of themed things so this is like a zoo pack that should have been living in plastic and and isn't and it's got a bit warped and then you've got collections so this one's the tiny miracle collection from um Kays of Craft, Christmas ones, and then you sort of got a bit of everything. Uniquely creative, you need uh, Kays of Craft. This is an Anzac Day one that I love. I know I've used that for a weekly deco before. Uh, more Kays of Craft, more uniquely creative, more uniquely creative, more Kays of Craft. And then you've got a couple of pads at the bottom, so big ones. Um, these ones are the ones that I need to kind of get rid of because I just don't reach for them. But I do reach for these ones. These ones are stacks. So it's just primary colours. So I've got one that's primary colours and then one that's pastel and they live over there. This is all sticker sheets from Kayser Craft back in the day. <laughs> back in the day I used to go in and buy these at like 50 cents a sheet. And the problem is that now I have thousands of them and I don't know what to do with them. Uh, but they are there. Uh, these ones kept on a little ring. It's 12 by 12 page protectors. They're just there. I haven't used them particularly much but they're there. Um, some stuff from Crafty Delicious Loves lives in there. And then I've got my Lawn Fawn wood grain cardstock. Next one up is Craft Board. This is from Cricut. I love it. I use it all over the place. Sorry, I'm really bad with my camera. Uh, this one's got some, it's my sort of my foiling one. So this one's got my Cricut foil at the back. And then these are my sheets that used to go through the mink. I've got a bunch that are cut up into small sizes. So they go through my laminator. Uh, but they live there. I've got my brown stack. I use a lot, or neutral stack, I guess it probably should be called. Um, I do use a lot of those, so they're there. These ones are my backgrounds. So if I'm taking pictures, these ones are usually what they're on. I have my Concord 9th cardstock, my Gina K cardstock, as you can see in plastic containers like they're supposed to be. Um, two stacks of Christmas, three stacks of Christmas here. Some of them are unique and creative. Some of them are die cuts with a view, but they're all there. These are the ones that I got. Uh, the bonds at the bottom are uh, um, Planners Anonymous. But these are the ones that I got uh, from Paper Stop at Picture to Page. And that's the one that I use for the um, one page wonder because I bought two pages. And then when you get to the, I'm going to skip just for a sec because it's going to make sense. Um, these are kind of my off cuts. So I used to keep these in drawers. The problem with keeping them in drawers is that I don't see them. I don't reach for them. They're not easy to find. They're not organized. So this is what I've done. The ones at the top are sticker paper, so that doesn't count. And then I've got stuff that I've used or made with my gel press. So I go there if I want that kind of card. And then I've got three pockets here that are for gold, silver, and rose gold. They all live there. A couple of 12 by 12 bits in there as well. And then I've got colours. So these are all plastic envelopes. I get them from either Officeworks or Kmart, wherever I can get them cheaper. And these have got my coloured cardstock offcuts. So anything that fits in here goes in here. 
So I've got pink, red, orange, yellow, blue, teal, purple. I have two for brown, which is bad, but I have brown and then I have brown up here because it's too fat to fit. Uh, I've got multicolored, so anything that doesn't really fit in any other category or white. White has its own sort of extra one up here, but um, you will see later. White kind of just lives in my drawer. Uh, and then I have a pile here for vellum. So this is any kind of printed vellum. All goes in that one. And then this one is sort of something I'm working out how to do. I got given it, it's kind of like a stamp and, stamp and color kind of set. Um, I don't actually know where it's from. There you go, card making paper craft. It's from a, a magazine. But it's like a collection of stuff and I just haven't got around to using it. But it is all there together so that when I do, it is all there. Okay, continuing to move on down. So I'm back down. I've got to, got to come down on my knees here. Uh, so this used to be behind me, which you well, it used to be underneath my window. Um, none of any of these things that you see in here are actually correct anymore. I need to change them all. Uh, I just haven't got around to it. And I wanted to do this video before we got to that. Uh, so the top one has tools that I don't reach for often, but that are too good to throw away. So my dial trimmer, uh, some spare mats, my 12 by 12 uh, scoreboard, an extra paper trimmer and your yeah, mats. Uh, foil quill lives in here as well. Second drawer is kind of, it's not projects, but it's kind of like overstocks of things so these are stuff that basically I use to make my December albums they live in here I will go through these and put these away at some point but we're not there yet uh, and this was the uniquely creative uh, card kit that I used to make so much stuff that lives in here as well there's also if you look right at the back there's a lot of um, um, vinyl overcut under um, vinyl scraps they all live it there at the back this one's my foam drawer <laughs> again messy I will tell you, I have some drawers that are horrible. Absolutely horrible. But at least I know where they all are. Uh, this one is sort of like miscellaneous things. So I've got parchment paper, drawing paper, um, black. Is that black cardstock? No, that's got some shimmer stuff to it. There's some uh, extra vellum at the bottom there. It's, it's basically cardstock that I use but isn't all the time. This one's got my... Um, laminating sheets so there's some acetate in there as well some extra bits I have a lot of laminating sheets I kind of buy them when they're on special and then this one I try not to open very often uh, because it's everything else is on top of it it's really weighed down this has just got some some felt I don't tend to use it very much so I don't really need to worry about it uh, but that is everything that's in that set of drawers while we're here on the floor, we might as well continue down here on the floor. So this set here, which I'll show you a, a back out view in a minute, um, is from Amart, Super Amart. It's like a cupboard insert or a drawer insert, uh, a walk-in robe insert, uh, but it works beautifully for what I want to do. So the bottom one is a bit taller than the others, uh, and that one keeps in all my bags, pouches, and pockets. As you can see, I have a lot of them. It's an obsession. Second one is full of stuff that, when I say I don't reach for, it's those tools that I've done once or twice that I just don't like. Um, so like my square punch, my binding tool, my old hole punch. Uh, there's also some baby stuff in the back there uh, that I didn't get to use for Charlotte. This is sort of my family drawer. So I won't give you too much of a look in that one because you do need places to keep family stuff. And then this is my infusible ink drawer. So all my infusible inks live in here, a couple of blanks, stuff that I need to get around to using. I'm really bad at it, um, but it is all there. Then I have, this is my family history stuff. So this is sort of my other, pattern, not passion, I won't go passion, um, but something else that I have done and do a lot. Um, actually, I don't do it a lot anymore, used to. Uh, it's my family history research, so that's all here. Uh, and it's just so it all stays together. There's a couple of other bits and pieces here, like calendars and, and family things like that. This is where I keep all of my old inserts. So when I do those flip throughs, that's what these all are. Make it really hard sitting there, but that's where they are. Little planners, uh, uniquely creative inspiration books live here. And I do come for them a lot. Books, notepads, things I don't reach for a lot. Uh, my Whistle and Birch planners are up here because they're too pretty to throw away, so they live up there. 
a uh, little place for storage for some bits and bobs so my uh, kiki k glitter tapes up there i've got some um shiny things oh bad framing shiny things a couple of ball balls bits and pieces all in there don't ask me why i keep it because i don't know the answer to the question but i keep all of my packaging for like all my lawn fawn and concord nights and all that i don't know why i keep it but i do it's an obsession so that all lives in a box just there uh and then there's sort of like storage stuff behind there so when i redo my uh pegboard which i do reasonably often i tend to hide the excesses and things uh sort of back there so that's where they live i'll just zoom out here whoops and so you can kind of see what that whole shelf looks like so it's got four three sets for for like vertical storage or books or that's sort of what i call it two of them are the same one of them's a bit bigger and then you've got four drawers at the bottom three the same size and one really really big one uh, and then like i said the the stuff at the top is all overflow mess stuff stuff that i don't reach for regularly but that i still need so it all lives up there all right so this is the newest section uh of my office it's sort of it's it's I don't know, I, I moved the set of drawers that were here. You might think that this probably wouldn't hold as much as my drawers. I think it actually holds more and it puts everything in a much better spot. Uh, so this is the, I think it's the Franchville um, machine cabinet, I guess is the right word, uh, from Officeworks. Things I love about it, number one, this lifts up. So if I want to, I can actually lift this whole shelf up. This slides out, which makes it very easy to use my machine. And then it also has sides that pop up, which make it really easy to sort of use as a standing crafting spot if I want to. If my desk is really messy, uh, I can use this. So on the top, I keep my laminator. As much as I still do love doing my hot foil, I do use a laminator reasonably frequently, which is why now it stays out. I have my mug press at the top. Don't use that anywhere near as frequently, but it's there because it's probably the easiest place for it to live. Um, this is actually a iPad stand. I just have it here because I like having it up there. I keep my social media planner here and I have a mouse pad that kind of comes down when I'm hot foiling. I just, it kind of moves around the place. Uh, down here, we have my Cricut. This is my Cricut Maker. Like I said, it's on a slide out uh, kind of thing. It does go all the way up. <laughs> it's having a easy fit today. Um, usually I keep my silhouette behind here because I do have both. I have a cricket and a silhouette. Um, at the moment, my silhouette is actually living up the front room because I've been using it, uh, to cut stickers. So I just, it's just been going while I've been at work. So this was, it usually lives behind there though and it isn't used as often. Uh, next row down here, I have my, uh, mats all at the bottom. That's the first thing I keep them there. I have my full size heat press. On the left and i have my mat down here i have mugs here that's keep them in their box and then at the back i'm actually going to come in here and show you this way whoops i need to wait for my camera to decide it wants to go up uh, at the back here i have a little storage basket that just has a bunch of excess vinyl things that i don't use all the time uh, but they're too good to throw away and this is one of my typo baskets it's great for just keeping hold of all the cords back there because there are a lot so the power board actually lives in the basket uh, and it just all clicks in there and it just makes it lots, lots easier. In the drawers down here at the bottom, they are two very generous drawers and I love that for that. The top one has all of my heat activated vinyl. So it's got um, stuff from Cricut Brands, stuff from Scat Cats. Uh, and it's also got my mini heat press in it. And then in the next, whoops, next draw down this is all of my um, adhesive vinyl so all stuff that needs to be weeded and stuck uh, the old-fashioned way so they all live in there uh, and like I said my infusible ink lives in the cupboard because that's sort of the three main products I use with my Cricut so I'm going to leave it there with just those parts of my office I will come back and do the second part of this video next Wednesday so watch out for that video if you haven't already subscribed now is a really good time to do it because it will make sure that you don't miss that video when it goes up. If you have any questions or anything you want to know about anything I've shown you in today's video, please let me know. You can leave it down below or you can find me on any of my socials. I hope you guys have an absolutely awesome rest of your day and I will catch you again in my next video. Sending lots of huggles. Bye.